Your monthly subscription box from PostFlyBox.com includes all the materials needed to tie a dozen flies, along with some extra goodies. The booby fly is a remarkably versatile pattern. It was originally developed to target trout in European lakes and ponds and to be fished using a sinking line. Now, however, bass and panfish anglers have found great success with it as a topwater pattern generally fished with a floating line. The booby starts with a size 8 fairly long shanked hook. After getting the hook firmly secured in the jaws of your tying vise, load a bobbin with a spool of white unithread. Get the thread started on the hook shank, leaving a full eye length space behind the hook eye. After taking a few wraps rearward, snip off the excess tag. Continue taking rearward wraps down the shank all the way to the start of the hook bend. Then make open spiral wraps up the shank to about a quarter of an inch behind the eye. The idea is to add a little grip to the otherwise slippery hook shank. Select a single white marabou feather and strip off the lower, shorter fibers from both sides of the stem. Preen down most of the remaining fibers to isolate the feather's tip, then snip the tip off. Preen the fibers back up and grip the feather right where the fiber tips begin to get stringy. Using your thumbnail, tear the stringy tips off to leave nice fluffy fibers. Measure to form a tail, a hook shank in length then transfer that measurement rearward to the start of the bend. Use tight wraps of tying thread to begin anchoring the marabou to the top of the shank. Once it's somewhat secured, snip the excess butt end off close. Continue taking open spiral thread wraps rearward to bind the marabou feather to the top of the shank all the way back to the start of the hook bend. You can then wrap up the shank to where you began. The tail of the fly should now look something like this. To add a little flash to the pattern, snip three strands of pearl crystal flash free from the hank and find their midpoint. Place the midpoint against the near side of the hook and begin taking thread wraps rearward to bind the material down. Pull the forward pointing portion of the flash over to the far side of the hook while keeping the rearward pointing portion on the near side. Take thread wraps rearward to anchor three strands of flash on either side of the hook. You can then reach in with your tying scissors and snip the flash off even with the end of the tail. Return your tying thread to that point a quarter of an inch down the shank. Pick up one of the red marabou feathers and prep it in the same manner as you did the white marabou feather, once again tearing the stringy tips off to leave nice fluffy ends. Align these ends with the tips of the white feather then take a few rearward thread wraps to bind the red feather down and snip its excess butt end off close. Continue binding the red feather down to the top of the hook shank just as you did with the white feather below. Go back over top of both feathers with thread wraps to make sure that they're really well secured. And with your tying thread at the start of the hook bend. Pick up one of the pieces of white craft foam and trim one end to a somewhat squared off point. Place the foam on top of the hook shank so the point extends about halfway down the tail. Start taking thread wraps to firmly bind the foam to the shank. Lift the tail up and take a couple of thread wraps beneath it around just the hook shank. Then take a few more wraps over top of the foam. Pull the forward pointing portion of the foam back and take a few wraps in front of it. The fly should now look something like this. Snip a 5 inch length of pearl cactus chenille free and strip a few fibers from one end to expose the string core. Lay the stripped off end against the near side of the hook and take tight thread wraps to secure it. Leave your tying thread once again at that quarter of an inch mark. Start taking wraps with the chenille up the hook shank, preening the frilly stuff rearward as you go. When you reach your tying thread, use it to anchor the chenille string core, then snip the excess off close. Take a few more thread wraps to make sure everything is well anchored. Pull the foam forward so it rests on top of the fly, then begin taking tight thread wraps to bind it down. Make sure to pull these wraps in nice and tight. Extend the tie down area just a little forward and back, then snip the excess forward pointing portion of the foam off close. 
Continue taking tight thread wraps to neaten up the area and end with your thread at the front edge of the foam. Pick up another piece of white craft foam and snip it in half. Holding on to one of the halves, use your bodkin to create a hole at the midpoint of the segment. Slip the hook eye through this hole, then push the lower end of the foam back along the underside of the fly and take thread wraps to secure it there. Push the top portion back and bind it to the top of the shank so it looks like so. It's imperative that the foam be bound down really well on both the top and bottom. Once it is, reach in with your tying scissors and snip the excess foam off both top and bottom. Continue taking thread wraps to smooth out the area between the foam head and the body of the fly. Get hold of another 5 inch length of pearl cactus chenille and prep it in the same manner as the first. Attach the end to the near side of the fly, binding it down well. Then make a series of diagonal wraps going from the back edge of the foam head, around the hook shank behind the hook eye, then back behind the foam head. This isn't nearly as complicated as it sounds. Get hold of the chenille and take two or three wraps with it to cover the thread wraps behind the foam head. Then, angle the material forward at a diagonal around the hook shank behind the hook eye, then back behind the foam eyes. The idea is to cover up the diagonal thread wraps across the top and bottom of the foam head. Finally, anchor the chenille with tight wraps of tying thread behind the hook eye and snip the excess off close. Pick up your whip finish tool and use it to do a five or six turn whip finish, seat the knot well, and snip your tying thread free. Eyes need to be mounted on either side of the foam head. To do this, it's first necessary to trim away any of the cactus chenille fibers that cover the ends. To mount the eyes, squeeze out just a little of your favorite gel adhesive onto a scrap piece of paper. Use the tip of your bodkin to pick up a small amount then apply the adhesive first to the near side of the foam head, then to the far side. Pick up one of the 3D eyes and place it into the adhesive on the near side of the hook. If you're using a super glue, just a little bit of pressure applied over a few seconds should set the adhesive to hold the eye firmly in place. Repeat the procedure with a second eye on the far side of the fly. The eyes should be mirror images of each other. And that's the booby. They're a ton of fun to fish, whether you're after trout down deep or bass and panfish on the water's surface. <laughs>